Hi, today we've got a very interesting topic. We're going to be chatting about ransomware and we've got Peter now from Sophos joining us. Let's get into it. Welcome everybody. Uh, we are here to talk about ransomware with Peter from Sophos. Welcome Peter. So what is ransomware? Well, you know what, um, if you hit with ransomware, you, you, you'll definitely know what it is. But ransomware is where a malware will get into your environment. And this is the attacker that's actually normally infiltrating via a, an unpatched file. Okay, they will find some form of loophole in the environment. Normally it's via software that's not patched or some form of malware or an entry point where they actually will encrypt all your machines. Okay, so that means they will keep you hostage for them to decrypt the machines. That means they have to, you have to pay some the money first before you get access back into your environment. So they lock it out completely. That means you, you can't operate, you can't do business in any ways until you make payment. That's exactly what they called your ransom. That's where the name came from. Well, ransomware actually started also, also mainly uh, with WannaCry. I don't know if you guys remember, this was a big attack in 2018, more or less, 2017, 2018. Uh, WannaCry was one of the major breakouts into our market, even in the SA market, not just but globally, but SA, we had a, a lot of big hits. Um, it was that bad where if, they, if you get compromised, you can't get rid of them. You wanted to cry. That's, what, that's where the name came across from. Because it was so difficult to, to even they sit in your backup, they sit everywhere. So that means the only way out is to make, make a payment. That's where the risk sits. So if, if a, a client has been hacked, how would they actually identify they've been hacked? Because the whole idea behind that is to be sneaky and to get into the systems without you knowing that they're there. Um, from a Sophos perspective, how, how does those notifications actually let the customer know, listen, there, there's a situation, we need to isolate this? Well, that's a great question. I was part of a big investigation quite recently, well, I would say recently, this is about uh, almost a year back, time flies. But part of the investigation was that a malware was actually sitting there, they're called the palomorphic malware. The malware was designed to bypass systems. That, so if you have a firewall in place and you don't have a certain policies in place, it will actually bypass the firewall. And that's exactly what happened in this case. They were sitting there for almost 18 months on the network without no, anyone no. knowing about it. No one knew about it, uh, but there was an alert at that point, but they removed all their footprints that were ever in that environment. Yeah. So they couldn't track it, they couldn't trace it, but that means in the 18 months, they did all the backups into uh, all the backup software they actually utilized. And every time with the backup, the ransomware got backed up as well. So when they activated this ransomware, yeah, it was already in the environment. So, so they had to li they lost 18 months worth of data because even the backup had the ransomware attached to it. Yes. So that's a great, yeah. great question. But there's not a quick fix to it. So it comes down to having the right technology again, having the right service path and to be able to identify it because um, there was a lot of alerts being populated, but no one reinvestigated the alerts because it was seen as moderate it wasn't seen as high risk. And that's where, that's, that's where you have to be selective again on the partner and also the right technology. Otherwise you'll miss it completely. So I mean, I know I've, I've heard of, of, of this happening where we, the, it, it gets installed into the system and, then, and it actually auto deletes itself. Yes. So you can't even go and isolate where the issue is. So the, the guys are getting a hell of a lot cleverer. And we've yes. got to make sure that you've got the right product to make sure that you, your, your system or your environment is pre uh, protected correctly. See, 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 the dark web is getting to a point where it's growing for almost any, any form of audience. We're talking about the youngsters today is growing, uh, growing up into the dark web. So there's a lot of open source tools they can use to build their own ransomware. Okay, so that means they don't pay for it. They, it's freely available, it's open source. And uh, that means the youngsters, all they need is a database. So they will build a ransomware in, 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 the, in the dark web. They will spark it to the certain, uh, certain database they've got. The, the mail is so designed that it's social engineering. Okay, you will click on it, you won't, you won't think much of it. Yeah, 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 and, sure. and this mail's got one purpose, to say, is this machine, comp is it, can it, can it be compromised, yes or no? If it says yes, they will infiltrate. They don't know who you are. This is a very important fact as well. They don't know what size of the company or who you are. So some of it is, is focused and some of it is just take, taking a chance. 100% yes. Okay. So it depends on the maturity of the attack. Who's left the door open? 100% agree. Okay. Yes. All right. So tell me, Peter, the cyber yeah. insurance, how relevant is it in our industry and do they actually cover us for ransomware? Yeah, well, that's a great question. So there's definitely a high demand and a growth on cyber insurance. There is. Um, but to get cyber insurance is very difficult because you have to have a certain a framework in place for them just to give you insurance. You have to have certain measurements you have to fulfill, such as having a SOC and MDR so servers, or you won't be able to get the cover. So they get cover, yes, it's possible. They will cover some for some operation and ransomware cost, they will cover it. 
but it's so difficult to get to that point. You have to fulfill so much investment on a some form of XGR platform and a SOC platform that you have before you can get cover. So yes, it is fulfilling the job, but to get insurance is expensive and complex. But yes. So if a customer has a DR site, which is not in the same location as the physical site, yeah. are you able to cover both? See, see we got a breach protection uh, cover. We cover this in the MDR standpoint. So as long as you've got our MDR from a product standpoint of SOFOS, we can give you that. So we don't charge for that service. It's something that we give because we know the product works. Uh, and yes, the answer is simple, yes, if they, but only if they use our technology. But if they use a general uh, insurance, um, they will specify what you want and what is your what is your need as a business and where you need to get protection from. If they just select the main site and the DR site, then yes, they will, they will be able to get cover. What a great informative session, everybody. Um, thank you for being here.